Okay, I guess it's time for the obligatory van life, school bus life, uh, bus tour. Uh, my name is Mike, and I live in this bus. And the name of the bus is unimportant because I don't name inanimate objects. It's a truck. It's my home. So it doesn't have a name. Nor will it ever. Um... The idea of this bus is uh, not so much, uh, and the main purpose of the video, is not so much to show you how to start van life. Probably the main focus of these videos is going to be uh, what to do when everything goes wrong. Why is it five hundred dollars? Oh, because it doesn't settle until they. I lost my my. Or I was in an RV. I kind of pussyfooted around. I, instead of just buying the bus outright, I bought an RV to test the waters. Instead of just jumping in like I knew I should have. Uh, that bus eventually rolled over in Winslow, Arizona. And then, uh, like most things in life, you're, you're kind of shoved in and you have to make a choice. And the, the choice was the bus. Um, I definitely wasn't going to retire back into an apartment. Just, eh, spent most of my life in apartments. Pass. Especially after tasting RV life. So the main focus of this, this, these videos are going to be uh, whatever pictures I'm taking and uh, the bus development. Uh, right now, as you see it, as it sits, it is more of an emergency shelter than uh, a bus build. Uh, when my bus rolled over, it was at an inopportune time, which is how life works. It's never going to be when you want it to happen or when the best time for it to happen is going to be. It's going to be, be when you least expect it on an idle Tuesday. So uh, I broke my leg. Then, uh, no, no, no. The van rolled, the RV rolled over. Then I broke my leg. Then um, I was holed up and eventually bought the bus bought the bus uh i think my leg was probably three months healed at the time went to denver got it came back and immediately got to work on making it a primitive shelter and that's exactly what it was in the beginning took the seats out uh with a healing broken leg uh, with the help of many many friends and uh, made it just enough to where it would be habitable and it worked it worked like a charm worked spectacularly uh, put in a wood burning stove uh, got a little wood immediately found out that that would not be enough 
Uh, the wood burning stove has been more of a show than anything else uh, during the course of the winter. The real hero of the heating story through uh, last winter was the diesel heater. The diesel heater kept me from freezing to death. Um, Aside from not sleeping in it the first night because I was like, like really, kind of, I don't know, like even a new apartment, I can't sleep in an apartment the first night I, I'm there. Second, third night, yeah, it gets better, but the first night, I'm never able to sleep in, in an apartment on the first night. So first night, yeah, it was a little rough, but after that, it just got more and more and more comfortable, to the point where it really started to feel like home. Um. I, my only real regret is I didn't do it sooner. I should have pulled the triggers much, much, much sooner on the bus. Um, but having said that, uh, life will hand you a plan, despite whichever one you make. And this is the plan. So here's the idea. Here's the design idea. The design idea, me being a, a fan of Star Trek, uh, I wanted to make a Star Trek themed bus, but I want I need there's nothing on Star Trek. I'm not gonna build it to look like Kirk's cabin on the ship. I wanted to build it like what you would imagine what his apartment would look like in the '60s in real life, his Earth apartment. So that's the whole design idea. So up front. <coughs> Excuse me. Up front, we have uh, the driver's area. The driver's area is going to be very unchanged. I have no desire to rip out all my gauges and tear out the windshield and remove the steering wheel and take out the gear shifter and remove all the wires. I have no, no desire to do that. All that stuff was put there for a reason. So I'm just going to let it stay. It's, it's not hurting me for, for it to be there, so it stays. Everything behind that line is all home. And I'm going at it. Uh, the, the idea, uh, my and this ties into my revenue streams, like uh, as a photographer. This ties into all my revenue streams, which are going to be streaming, uh, gaming, streaming, uh, the photography stuff, the bus itself, and uh, piano. Um, so this idea right here, all this right here is going to be uh, TV. At first I wanted to put a desk and monitors and so forth and so on, but that was going to take up a ton of room. So no. Uh, so this whole area is going to be TV. And it seems a little audacious for me, but I'm going to go with an enormous 75 80 inch television but then again my power needs are minimal i don't use much power at all um, the fireplace takes care of a lot of that the diesel heater takes care of a lot of that i cook with propane so forth and so on so enormous tv like comically big television monitor for the live streaming cameras wherever they need to be um, this is going to be a fold-out futon. This whole thing is going to be a fold-out futon. Right now, it's just a Walmart cot. Like, day one, I just went out and bought, like, camping gear. Uh, this is going to be a Walmart cot. This right now is a Walmart cot, and it will be a futon, which will be up a little bit higher, and will be able to turn into a bed. I have zero intent of sleeping 25 people. I get it. Every other video for school buses... They have 95 people, 95 convertible beds, and they have 10 couches, and they, they, the couches face each other, which is, I always thought was kind of weird. You just sit there kind of looking at each other. Um, so this is going to be the idea, more the idea of an open uh, warehouse flat. My first apartment in New York, um, I, I moved out when I was 13, and I got my first apartment in New York when I was 14. 14 or 15 and it was essentially just a warehouse above where we worked at breakaway courier um and they rented us apartment my share of the rent was 800 bucks and we just divided it up with curtains with rugs that we found on the street 
and that was it was just a giant open warehouse with bunk beds and divided out rooms so that's that's kind of the idea more of a flash dancey quicksilver warehouse type apartment vibe open no two by fours no no cabinets no nine inches of of, of foundational construction east all this eastern european construction it kind of drives me crazy uh, just a nice comfortable open space my kids are grown they're out on their own they're out in the world um, so I guess it's an empty nest uh, it's just me uh, so I need a place to sleep I need a place to entertain and I need a place to sit and that's it I need a place to cook store food and so forth and so on so let's take a look around shall we this is the driver's area it will not change um, i'm not going to change the color i'm not going to change much of anything with it it is very nice the way it is remember it is safe to tell uh painted it what i felt captain kirk's apartment would look like it would probably have a lot of red so I went with a uh, burgundy from Ace Hardware. Yeah, Ace Hardware. But outside of that, this area is not going to change much at all. I'm going to put a, a big giant panorama over that panel, uh, one of my pictures. And I'm keeping the safety rules because it's that important. No eating, crossed in front of the bus, no throwing articles from the windows, remain seated, be orderly and quiet, keep arms and head inside. All secondary students should have bus cards. No smoking, kids. It's a state regulation. Um, this is where I hang my remotes for my skateboards. This area is going, that heater is coming out. So this heater is coming out. All that's coming out. It's just unnecessary. Uh, this bucket came with the bus and it's attached to the floor. There's the flares. I think those might be federal mandate, mand mandates. Uh, the bucket, I think, yeah, the bucket has to come out or it's just going to be a garbage can. It definitely has to move from that immediate area. H-pop is leaking. Uh, diesel is not as scary as I thought. I believe I'm getting to know it very well. There's the door. Where's my ISO? There it is. There's my door. Uh, that is red as well. All that is red. All that is red. This is going to be, let's get this in frame. This is going to be the enormous TV area because I like gaming and I like Twitch gaming. So we're going to stream Twitch. That's going to be a revenue stream for me. So all that comes out right now under here. This is all dollar store totes. When the RV rolled in Winslow, Arizona, I went and bought those totes from the Dollar Tree, Dollar General. And that's where everything, everything in those totes is what's left of what was in the RV. And those four boxes, five boxes, there's one back there too. This area, area is going to be uh, futon. Um, and while we're up here, this entire metal strip is going to be covered with the foam from seats and then this 100% triple uh, throw carpet rug thing that's going to be what's going to cover everything from here all the way down and I have an interior designer friend who says it should be in tan because the roof is red 
So all this is going to be all this is going to be covered in uh, beige tribble fur because tribbles deserve to die. This whole area where the wood is, the 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 auxiliary heater is coming out. The second auxiliary heater auxiliary heater is staying in. This one's coming out as a spare. That one's going below when I get the boxes installed. And the wood be in a cage that goes from floor to ceiling and then out to about here. And then it'll have its own cage so it doesn't roll around when moving. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, all this is mock-up. None of this is, is hard tack at this point. Um, so the wood is going to go in a cage from floor to ceiling. It's going to have a door and it's going to be uh, solid. So in the event of a rollover or an accident, it doesn't go anywhere. That propane tank, I just bought that propane tank. So honestly, I hate the idea of getting rid of it, but it can't, I can't install it on the bumper I was going to install it on the other side of that wall outside on the bumper in a metal rack, but then the motorcycle is going on the other side of that wall on their metal rack and the bumper. So I can't install a propane tank outside. So I'm going to have to get rid of this nice, very nice brand new can that I just kind of bought and because it can't go underneath. And then I'll replace it with one of the RV tanks. They have those at, uh, at Amazon for about 700 bucks which honestly I'm okay with the little bit of extra because it's propane and it's dangerous. So this one is probably going to go up for sale. Um, I don't really use it anyways, uh, but it's here for mock-up for this. This is the kitchen. It's got a little camping stove on it right now where that Brillo pad is and stuff. That's going to be a sink. And then this is just storage. At the moment, there is just tea bag uh, that thing uh, jalapenos don't ever buy serranos that's a lie they're not they're super hot somebody told me that they weren't hot some homemade popcorn and coffee tea and, and milk oh, I do have milk I forgot I had milk uh, flour baking soda all seasoning and then the bottom drawer is uh, utensils and I got to figure out a way to lock those so they don't slide open when I drive right now I just put a stick the metal stick I got down in there uh, so plumbing is going to go underneath and then out and down behind the wheel well because the wheel well is right under here and then wherever it's got to go I don't know uh, I might even run plumbing inside who knows now, so that's going to be the kitchen area. The diesel heater, since we're here, the diesel heater is going to, I don't know. I think the diesel heater is in a good spot. I might move it up here, like on a platform up here. I think that would make sense. Um, but it may just stay right there. I don't know. Or maybe build a cabinet and then have it up a little bit higher. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. And the, the star of the show, the wood-burning stove. The wood-burning stove, I was very happy with it. I didn't know how much wood I needed to make this thing work, so it ended up not doing a whole lot this winter. But it, it, when it did work, when I did have enough wood for it, it heated the daylights out of this thing the floor was hot the, <laughs> the floor was hot the ceiling was hot got to the point where i needed to open windows in the in the cold in the winter in new mexico it gets a little chilly so this was installed previous the, all this rug and all that stuff here uh the rug uh all that stuff back there this cot uh the triple fur this box all this 
was especially that kitchen the kitchen thing is just in the last couple weeks this thing was installed in november uh because it was cold in here and uh, my bed was back my bed is and was back there but this thing um was installed in november and it was installed uh there's these holes in the roof which i don't know what they were for they were empty when i got the thing so what I did was I just, back in November, I just ran the pipe through that hole, you know, all right, fine, whatever, it works right there. So that's all that was. So, and this stove board is very small, but it was the only one they had. So the, this pipe is gonna go back 18 inches to about right there. And that would give me a foot and a half between the wooden kitchen and the back of the stove and so this is coming back to about here the front legs of the stove will be right there um, the new stove board is 36 by 57 so the new stove board is going to go from the front edge of the rug all the way back to the wheel well and then all the way over to the wall so it's basically going to be the kitchen floor and it, that this, if you don't know, which I didn't know until a couple days ago, stove board is metal. I, did, I had no idea what it was made of. Uh, it's metal, which I guess makes sense because that means it has to be fireproof. Duh. You think I know that by now, but I do not. Uh, I picked it up the other day to move the rug, and one of the little tabs came out. It's metal. Who knew? So that covers all this area. Now, coming back here... Here is my current solar setup. It is very small, and it is what survived the, the Winslow rollover. Uh, these are little battery tenders. These are battery tenders for uh, maintaining mostly like car batteries that sit for a long time. I bought a couple of these from O'Reilly some time ago, and I did find them when I went to get my stuff from Winslow, Arizona. I got two new batteries, and that is, and, in, and I recovered all three of my small inverters. My big inverter was uh, MIA, but the little inverter survived and hooked it up to a battery, and that's a solar setup. That is how simple it is. Uh, batteries, really cheap wire <laughs> to keep the diesel heater happy, and two solar two solar panels and it keeps them charged it doesn't it doesn't really i can't run anything big on that but it keeps them going it keeps them charged up this is dirty laundry this i will get into later i was um thinking like what does a laundry machine do a laundry machine soaks your clothes in soapy water rinses them out and then gives them back to you so why not use an old cooler as a, as a washing machine so as my clothes get dirty they go in there with a little bit of water and uh some soap they sit i don't know for a day until i feel like doing it again and then i rinse it all out then then rinse them two more times and then the, the laundry's clean the laundry is clean uh this one is just for papers there's really just papers in there that one is food storage that bottom one is 20 pounds of beans, 20 pounds of rice, uh, five pounds of flour, and so forth and so on. This is camera gear storage at the moment. It is very, very rudimentary. This is bedtime. And, and van life doesn't change. Van life doesn't change that. Your bed is just a storage unit. That's all it is. When you get out of bed, all of your clean clothes go on to bed. And then when you go to bed, all of your clean clothes go back on the pile until you wear them all down and then put them back into your makeshift washing machine. There is a ton of room in here and this floor is nice and warm. This does nothing, absolutely nothing for this much space. If you have this much space, this does kind of nothing. Uh, that's my broken up toolbox. Uh, I was able to recover a lot of my tools from Winslow uh, and it all went in there and then it all started to come out of there. So I had to find somewhere else to put my tools. That is camera storage. 
Uh, this is just uh, this is just black construction paper, and from the outside, it kind of looks like the windows are tinted. You know, without you know thinking about it, you would think that the windows are tinted, but they are not. It is just black construction paper up to the windows. Makes it look nice on the outside, but it's not. It doesn't look that hot on the inside. But this truck has how many? Uh, 60, 67 windows. This truck has 67 windows. So when you consider the idea of tinting all these windows, consider that. Because <laughs> that's what that means. You're going to be tinting 67 windows. So I'm going with the vinyl static adhesive windows. That's as far as I go with that because there is a lot of stuff to do, a lot of bases to cover. So at this point, we have to cover as many bases as we can in a relatively short time. We don't want to move too fast, but just as many bases as you can, as reliably and as well as you can until uh, you can do better. But one thing I learned with, uh, with the RV was you're going to do it again. Yeah, you're going to paint your RV, but you're going to paint it again, and you're going to paint it again, and you're going to paint it again. These things take a beating, and it's gonna, it, it takes a little work. It's just like a house. So that is my van life tour, school bus build tour. That is how it works at the moment. It is a place to live, it is quiet, it is peaceful. I'm happy I got it. I'm thankful I got it. Thanks for joining in.